A couple weeks ago, Hardware Canucks did a video where they demonstrated that thanks to an update from Adobe, that the rendering performance, if you have an Intel integrated graphics solution in your processor, is a lot more useful than you originally thought. And then Gamers Nexus did some follow-up work and they proved that, yes, it helps things immensely. And in the case of both of them, the conclusion I got is that their rendering machines would now integrate integrated graphics from Intel. So, I was also curious, because, you know, I've got a Threadripper system I could sell, and I have a laptop with a 1070, as well as Intel graphics, so if I could just keep the laptop and sell my desktop, that would be awesome. Now, I trust the work they do, they put out good, consistent numbers, but there's a lot of information that didn't get put into their videos that I would like to add to this discussion through this video. So, I have my Threadripper system with a 1950X and a 1070Ti, as well as my laptop with a 7700HQ and a regular 1070, and I've done a lot of benchmarks here, and not just rendering performance, but also timeline scrubbing performance. Now, whereas Hardware Canucks and Gamers Nexus are fairly established, it's safe to say, I am definitely not. I don't know how many layers are going to be in my project, just like you don't know how many layers are going to be in that burrito you bought off the street corner in downtown Dallas. Could be two, could be 20. I've got three different videos varying in intensity. I'm going to start with the most intense projects first, and then work my way down to the least intensive, and I'll get to timeline scrubbing at the end. So to start off with, I was doing my video, which you can see behind me, about GPU power consumption. This was 12 layers more than 50% of the time, and at least half of them are chroma keyed. And the camera footage was shot at 4K 30, 80 megabits a second, and the gameplay in the background whenever I'm talking is 4K 60, and varying bit rates, varying codecs. Depends what I recorded with at the time. So, pretty intense projects, and my 4th gen i5 laptop with no dedicated graphics can't even play the background footage of what I was using in that project. So, pretty beefy. In terms of exporting, 40 megabits a second, 2560 by 1440p, 60 frames per second. So how about those good results and that charty goodness? Well, the Threadripper system managed to render this 14 minute video in 31 minutes. Not the greatest, but it was actually the best out of all of these, spoiler alert. When I threw in a 1050 Ti to help out the 1070 Ti, it actually made things a lot worse, which was kind of surprising because, you know, wouldn't more graphics cards be better? Sadly, it was not, as it took 55 minutes and 45 seconds. The 1050 Ti was completely maxed this whole time, and the CPU and GPU were both jumping around in the 25 to 40 percent usage. When I swapped the PCIe slots, which would put the 1050 Ti on top and the 1070 Ti beneath it, then things actually improved to be somewhere about in the middle, taking 40 minutes. When it came to software encoding on the laptop, it was five seconds faster than with two GPUs put in the Threadripper system, which is interesting. Not much of an improvement, but I guess it's a lot less electricity. And when I put it in hardware encoding mode, taking use of those Intel integrated graphics, the IGP was maxed, the 1070 was at 70% usage, and the processor was fully pegged at 3.4 GHz, 37 minutes and 30 seconds. So, not quite matching that Threadripper, but still better than two graphics cards, which is just a really bad option. No one should ever do that. So, it was 17% behind Threadripper, or six and a half minutes. As for the next video project I rendered, that would be my Major League Gaming, which was at 1080p 30, half the bit rate, and a lot less than half the rendering time, because the 1070 Ti Threadripper system did it in three and a half minutes. Way better. Throwing in a 1050 Ti to help, added a minute. 
and it introduced a new bottleneck because now we're running 30% slower than with just one GPU. Swapped the cards, then the performance was in the middle. Software encoding was four minutes and two seconds, 16% behind Threadripper and 11070 Ti. Hardware encoding dropped it down to three minutes, 48 seconds, which is 14 seconds ahead of where it was in software encoding and only 18 seconds away from Threadripper and a 1070 Ti. So in a situation like that, using Intel graphics is perfectly acceptable. There's no reason to spend several hundred dollars more on Threadripper and going up a GPU if it's only going to save you 18 seconds. So another video, this one is probably closer to what most other people will do if they're not green screening everything they do. I did a video which was only chroma keyed long enough to bring in Snoop Dogg and an explosion. Just those memes, no more chroma key. And then it was just color corrected 1080p 60. I don't remember the recording bit rate, but it was probably between 20 and 30 megabits a second. I exported to 1080p 60 at 20 megabits a second. So a fairly easy export. Threadripper took care of this in 3 minutes and 29 seconds, which is especially impressive considering that the video was 420, faster than real time. The CPU was utilized at 75%, pretty much even among all the cores. The GPU was also used 70%, but that's technically according to Task Manager, so I wouldn't really trust that number, which you can learn about why in this video up at the top corner but I was using Task Manager so I could measure between systems because Afterburner and lots of other software just doesn't run on the laptop because of the way the 1070 is included, or if I'm running it in Microsoft Hybrid Graphics mode. So, comparable numbers, not precise numbers. I didn't test any multi-GPU because that clearly hasn't done me any favors up to this point, so next up is software encoding with the laptop. 8 minutes, 22 seconds, two and a half times what we got before, which is way different than some of the results we've seen before. But what about hardware encoding? Can that save the day? Almost. It brought it down to 5 minutes and 15 seconds, which is only one and a half minutes behind Threadripper, but that's still like a 50% difference. So percentage-wise, it's a lot. Real-world time-wise, it's not that much. So, it's not the end of the world. The CPU was utilized 70%, pretty much consistently. The IGP, completely maxed, never dipped below 95%, and the 1070 was only used 40%, again, according to Task Manager. So, the IGP could make sense here for this project. It was really useful for the last one, so it would appear so far that as long as you're not doing anything crazy with a dozen layers of 4K chroma key, you should be okay with an IGP instead of going HEDT. Man, that's a lot of acronyms. I wonder if I could build a computer out of acronyms. So how about timeline scrubbing? Well, for that LEGO project, completely fine. 1080p 60 with just one or two layers not a problem, the machines could handle it. When it came to the Major League Gaming, when I had five or six layers with all different levels of transparency all fighting with each other, that did max out the Intel graphics and as you can see here in Task Manager, we can see where the bottleneck is and it's not the 1070. So maybe the 8-core processor that comes out later down the road could get around that. But for now, you probably need to not be using the Intel integrated graphics if you're going to be scrubbing through constant memes. Now for that first project where I've got 12 layers and 4K chroma key, the IGP didn't stand a chance with a project like that, as you can see from trying to scrub through it here. Not a pretty picture, and certainly not something I would want to be editing for hours and hours at a time. So because I'm doing projects like this, 
I should probably optimize my workflow so I don't have to. But as long as I'm working with stuff like this, I can't fully commit to using just Intel integrated graphics. It does wonderful things for render times, and it's nice to have a backup editing machine at home in the form of my laptop. But still, it's not a complete one answer fits all conclusion. So, if you like your videos like your burritos with lots of layer and extra chroma key sauce, then you're gonna have to probably shell out the extra few hundred dollars to go with a high core count, high clock speed system over integrated graphics. If you're new to this channel and new to me, welcome! Why don't you hit that subscribe button? I won't insist that anyone ever hits the bell icon because these videos are all over the place. But I do have GPU thermal benchmarks coming up in the next couple weeks, so make sure to stick around if you want to see stuff like that. And if you liked this video, well why don't you mosey on down below and hit that like button and try one of these other videos. And meanwhile, I've got a 1050 Ti I need to go sell on Craigslist, so I'll go do that. Leave a comment down below while I'm away, why don't you?